Each brand is different in terms of its theory of change when it comes to social media. There's a difference between cultural appreciation and cultural appropriation. And what I really mean by that is that sometimes you'll look at a brand and they'll start using words that they think are hip and sceny and think that if they add that into an ad, it's gonna be effective. There's a way that we can talk about vernacular or talk about campaigns in a way that also talks about the way that they are really complicated and nuanced. A lot of the way that Gen Z vernacular even is used comes from African-American vernacular English and queer communities. So if we're co-opting a lot of this language, how do we then reconcile that with our own personal usage of it, but also the way that brands might be using these things as well if they're not even coming from these communities. I often feel like brands, when you go to them, they haven't really articulated what their why is, and that's when they need to go to actual communities to say, how can we build something that actually is meaningful to the people that are going to come back to us again and again and again? Back in 2020, we had very little number of followers uh, in our TikTok account, although we had already millions of followers in across other channels. Our first viral video was in September of that year, and it was two wheelchair basketball players doing a little dance together on court. What's poppin'? Don't mind me, just watch it. It was the short form content on TikTok where we realized we were able to showcase Paralympic sports to many people outside of our athlete and our community bubble. I think it has to do with the time that Richard was also spending on the platform, trying to understand uh, what would work well, what didn't. It just went all really fast and our numbers started to grow very, very quickly after that. So if you go on the Paralympics TikTok account, you'll see a lot of content repository that comes from the actual event itself. So you're getting to see real pictures and real videos that you would get to see if you're actually watching the event. We realized the best thing that we can do is to showcase footage from the Paralympics. And we decided to invest on that in any paid off. Paralympics basketball events or even some of the track and field events are showcasing moments where it's not necessarily picture perfect, but instead something that is still humorized or universal emotion or truth that you can lean into. And I think moments like that actually make it feel like this is something that's relatable across the board. I think it gives more people be exposed to all different types of sports that maybe they didn't even know existed in more of a lighthearted way. The one that got 15 million views was the wheelchair basketball player. She made a three point and then fell over the basketball. There were so many comments that were like, I love this account. We have very high engagement right here. So we have a great opportunity to speak to young fans of the Paralympics every single day. Talking to the, your primary source is the best way to find out information. And if I was to create a campaign for a specific community, I would not decide to make content or engage with that without having those people be present. So if you're consulting and asking people who are already from this community, is this something that actually resonates with you? That's your best barometer of how not to get canceled, of how not to do things that are actually disempowering a community when you're making assumptions about what they could actually want to see on these platforms or what they want to engage with. I feel very comfortable with uh, the fact that this account as well is run by a, a Paralympian, a person with disability. So I think it, it gives a, a lot of reassurance as well on what we're doing. I was a Paralympic athlete, been involved with Parasport since the age of 10 years old. Being able to share my passion through the short form videos on TikTok to a larger audience is a dream come true. A lot of the way that TikTok has changed our relationship to an actual consumer is that you get to engage with a brand in real time. Once I've posted a video, I spend the next half an hour to an hour monitoring the comments because you need to then capture the newest people's attention and also if there's any questions about the Paralympic sports and about the content in the clip, I can answer that too. The Paralympics has done the strategy of not pushing awareness kind of like in your face. The bop it, twist it audio. Bop it, bop it. I saw in the comments, non-jokingly, just a fact. So I think it's a cool perspective for people looking to just have a laugh with a bit of education. I think for Paralympics specifically, they have such a unique position to talk about how do we think about disabled athletes and what is even the language and the verbiage that we use. People with disabilities get the view of only being on social media to inspire. I'm not very happy with inspiration porn. And so I wanted to showcase people with disabilities doing sport but in a different way to how it's been done previously. And so by using the viral sounds and by using the trends, that's how we're doing that. 
maybe some people will tell, well, but you're making fun, you're making using humor to talk about people with disabilities. My question would be, would you make the same comment if there was an Olympic athlete? There shouldn't be a difference in the way that we treat athletes being Olympians, able-bodied or uh, athletes with disabilities. Sometimes I post things that are comedy driven and I welcome in comments that also make fun of me or something funny about the video. And I think there's a time and place to really harness that comedy energy because I feel like there can be such a negative, more serious context around people with disabilities. We also knew how to trust the team, how to trust people who are in the platform. Do you want to be remembered and you want your content to stand out on an app which is already very live, lively and in your face. This notion of brand risk is actually different than this idea of brand soul. That if we're gonna go on these platforms and tell stories, do marketing efforts, make campaigns, at the end of the day, there's some universal truths that everyone finds meaningful. Oftentimes, brands try to take such calculated evaluations and use data and metrics to define what their strategy should be when there's just real storytelling that can happen because marketing so much so is about telling untold stories.